All right, here I am. <laughs> I'm right on time. I'm never late. Hey, folks, I want you to go out and uh, tell somebody to join us. Of course, I pray this is another good one. Wake up with Jay. I'm your host, Jay. God loves you, and so do I. Now, check out that topic. Ten ways to cultivate fearlessness, right? Now, what I go through every day, I thought this would be a good time to... Uh, to talk about this one today because um, we're at the end of 2019. We're about to close out a decade here and go into another one, okay? So we know that fear is something that holds a lot of us back. What I mean by hold a lot of us back is very simple. Okay, from the things that we really want in life, from the better life. Now, a lot of these fears are taught to us as a little child. And during my research, I found an article uh, that I want to go through. And I think it kind of puts us in a situation where I want to be, where I can kind of uh, talk to you about this. And hopefully I can reach somebody out there that your 2020 will not be like your 2019, that you be able to, to break the, uh, the chains of fear holding you back from having the things that you really want in life. Because remember, fear, false evidence appearing real. It doesn't really exist. You know that, and I know that. And we all have to work on it in our own different ways. So, 10 ways to cultivate fearlessness. Let's go ahead and, and get started. Uh, I'm going to bring up this article. You can't see it, but I can. <laughs> this article was written by a gentleman by the name of uh, Pete Zach Rich. Okay. So you're going to see me looking over here uh, a lot as we go and talk at the same time. So he's kind of got like like a prelude here. I'm not going to go through all of it, but there are some important facts. Like it starts out at 875. Henry Fonda was still, Henry Fonda was still throwing up before getting on stage. Now we all know that he was a movie star. Okay. He said, now with a 50 year career starting opposite um, movie stars like Betty Davis, Lucille Ball, Catherine Hepburn, some of you young people might not know these very famous movie stars. Um, he was still afraid of doing his job, okay? He was running from, let's say, a built-in fear all that time in his life. <clears throat> and it goes on to say that author Stephen Pressfield warns that for the creative, this fear never goes away. The warrior and the artist live by the same code of necessity, which dictates that the battle must be fought anew every day. Now, what do you get out of that? What you should get out of that is that you are continuously fighting your fears every day. They never, listen to what I'm saying now, they never go away. And I just realized I didn't turn on the light in the left side of my room. So I pray y'all can see me, okay? It just dawned on me. Oh man, I love doing this live stuff. But I want you to, to, to understand uh, more my words than my sight, okay? Now, I says, don't get me wrong, courage is a central skill while you're faking it until you make it, but I don't want to live the rest of my days feeling like I'm going to lose my lunch. Let's take off the training wheels, okay? Now, second part of it says, what, what's courage got to do with it? You know what? I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip down to here. Why why we fear what we fear, okay? Now, um, this is Jimmy was a bacterium who lived millions of years ago who was smart enough to run away from bigger bacteria before becoming a dinner. He was lucky enough to find a real sweet lady bacteria and pass that genius behavior on to his kids. You are a direct descendant of Jimmy 500 million generation years ago. Now, what is that saying? Okay. Fear is actually passed on. 
because we as children, we will take from our parents and our grandparents, uncle, aunt, people who are in our family above us. And then we, we formulate the way that we think through what's passed on to us. Now, some of us through education and whatnot are able to break away, but millions of us are not, okay? So let's get right into it. 10 ways to cultivate fearlessness. Now, number one, the number one way, believe it or not, is says know what keeps you up at night. And then uh, we have a short quote here by Carl Jung, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will run your life and you will call it fate. Listen to what he's saying there. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will run your life and you will call it fate. I want you to just think on those words for a second there, okay? Because, you know, fear is not a reality. It's, it's man-made. It's something that we put in us. And don't get me wrong. There are some naturals, and we'll get into that in a minute. It says, go out into the woods with a bow and arrow, pick a target, blindfold yourself, and shoot. And then he says, did you hit the target? Of course not. You can't hit a target that you can't see. If you want to overcome your fears, you need to know them. I'm going to give you an example of myself, okay? And this is one, I guess you could say, I more so learned it in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know, with the other kids. Uh, do you remember back to your youth about the black cat theory, right? Don't let a black cat cross your path or your whole day messed up. I used to outrun cats. I'm not going to lie to you. Or I would try to shoo them or whatever to make them change direction and where they were trying to go. Now, this poor cat was probably out hunting for, for the morning and was just trying to get back to his house. He had nothing to do. He wasn't thinking about me. He just happened to be black and he was trying to get back home, you know. Now, the other one that cracks me up is the uh, uh, walk under a ladder. Do you remember that one? Okay. Or don't step on a crack in the ground, you know. Or, uh, what's the other one? Uh, split the pole. You remember the split the pole one? Okay. Sometime, even today at my age, I accidentally let that one get into my head. But I've managed to overcome most of it just from awareness over the years that it's just foolishness. It doesn't exist. You know, uh, otherwise, why would people own black cats? Okay. You know, and a ladder, I don't know. Why would you walk underneath a ladder anyway? You know, and if you did, so what? So it says here, number two is face fear head on. And they give a quick quote, quote at the top, which I'll read. It says, Let's, let difficulties know that you are difficult. That's pretty good. Let difficulties know that you are difficult. That's by APJ Abdul Kalim. It says, knowing your enemy is step one, but many who know their hangups go to great lengths to avoid them. Okay? So, aside gods have, have cataloged many strategies we use to avoid our fears. Some of the greatest hits. Avoidance takes place when we tell friends, I'm just tired on Saturday night to avoid our ex and open wounds and that betrayal, okay? You're talking about going out on Saturday night, bumping to your ex, okay? That's a, it's a, it's actually a fear. Repression happens when our brain uh, causes us to bury traumatic experiences like physical abuse. Projection occurs when we complain about another behavior only to deflect from the same flaw in ourself. In other words, we'll see something that's negative in somebody else and we'll try to bring them up against fighting the same demon that we have inside of us. Anxiety. Anxiety develops when we try to control every aspect of our lives instead of dealing with the root issue of the problem. That one's really heavy. I had to stop and think about that one myself. It says, in all cases, the solution is the same. To bring that fear to the light and face it head on, whatever your fear is. I can remember as, I don't know, nine, somewhere between nine, 10, 11 years old, okay? In fact, I might've been in high, well, junior high. So it was probably 12, 13. I had this great fear of lightning. Now remember, I lived three blocks from the ocean, okay? I lived on an island, which is called Atlantic City, but three blocks from the ocean. So uh, 
understand this, the closer you are to water, big, you know, um, big water such as oceans, right? Probably some rivers, but I know for sure oceans, the more powerful lightning is. And I'm telling you, I, I would just shake to death. I would get under covers, cover my head, you know, and then the thunder, oh my goodness. So lightning and thunder was a big enemy until one day, um, I just decided that something that that far off is not gonna scare me. So I got up one night, I threw open all the curtains, right? Took the blankets off of my bed and I made myself lay there and watch the lightning. And then I would count because you know, so many seconds after comes this big boom, okay? And then I realized after two or three times, of course I was still there, <laughs> you know, so everything was cool. But now also, and it just, just came to me, um, I remember grandma always, it, you probably went through the same thing, the old folks, they would always make us sit still when this was going on because grandma said that that was God talking. So you had to sit down and shut up. Okay. But um, that's how I overcame my fear. You know, now there's been others, example, um, swimming. Okay. Now I had the big boys in the neighborhood to help me that one because we had something called breakers and they took us out on the breakers and they would just throw us off into the, into the ocean. Really, they throw us into the ocean. And don't get me wrong, they throw us and they tell us to doggy paddle back to shore. So my first way I learned to swim was, you know, the doggy paddle. I got back to shore and, you know, but um, the more I was able to experience with the ocean, such as holding my breath under the water, going out further than, you know, I could stand and all that, it took away some of the fear. But now I'm gonna tell you right now, I have a lot of respect for the ocean, a lot of respect for the ocean because I live near it and I've seen the different phases of it and I've lived through hurricanes. I mean, like being on the first floor and we were on the second floor, okay? So yes, you definitely have to face your fears. It says, uh, number three, get clear on your why. It says, if you have a very clear vision of where you wanna go, then the rest of it is much easier. That's a quote by Arnold Schwarzenegger. It says, when I have a rock solid reasons for tackling a challenge, just like the one I just told you, okay? I challenge my, uh, my fear of lightning and thunder. And when that motivation is stronger than your fear, fear goes into hiding. It's that simple, okay? Um, it says, imagine you hated public speaking, but you need to pitch a room full of investors to land a million dollar contract. Now imagine that your child needed a million dollar operation to survive, okay? So what happens? It says, would you give the best darn presentation of your life? You bet, okay? So that's just an example of how you overcome your fear. Now let's move on to number four. It says, spend time with fearless people. Short quote by Jim Rohn. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I know most of you uh, heard that before. So that means that you need to hang around with some fearless people. That's what Jim is saying. Jim Rohn's words have been repeated a thousand times and they're worth saying again because the point is critical in your ultimate level of success. If you want to overcome a fear of flying, spend time in a cockpit, okay? To get over scary rejection, hang out with friends who get electrified talking to a hundred strangers a day. That's like, and making phone calls. A lot of people say they fear talking to someone on the phone. Now here's a question for you. Fear what? You would talk to your best friend, uh, your girlfriend, uh, your aunt, your buddy, your brother, sister, whatever, okay? So why should you fear a stranger on the phone? Straight, in, the true fear is of them saying no, that's your fear. It's not the phone call, it's the rejection. Okay, so you have to call it what it is and once you learn to face it, you try a few times. I always tell people practice in a mirror before you start making calls, okay? Well, let me try something out. This is very important. 
Understand what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to jump in that water, right? And fail a couple of times until that fear, you'll find out through having conversation with people that people like to talk, okay? And eventually the fear will go away <laughs> and you will increase your paycheck, all right? Now it says, watch videos of people doing what scares you. I don't know about this one, but hey, they say it works. What can I say? Uh, this is true by Foster Research Study. They say one minute of video is worth 1.8 million words, okay? So you can watch people in real life, but you can also become fearless from the comfort of your own iPads. And what it's suggesting here is to go out and watch, uh, let's say you're scared of snakes. Watch some movie about snakes. You're scared of spiders. Same thing, okay? So what you're doing is you're finding out more research about what it is you're actually scared of. And in the end, you'll find out that you're not scared at all. This is practice worse case scenario thinking. You know, the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> okay. So um, another short quote, nothing should ever be unexpected by us. Is there anything that fortune won't knock off its high horse if it pleases her? That's by Seneca. Now it says, how do you get over fear of the worst happening? Rehearse the worst. Now, just think of this. Um, well, this is happening in our schools right now today. This is a good example, right? They're having a number of, of, um, of drills, you know, to protect students from some idiot walking in with an AK-7 and start shooting up the place. They have drills for this. So that way, if you have enough drills, this goes back to my military days, that when the actual thing happens, you will respond automatically without thinking. Okay. All right. Let me get on to the next one. This is, now this one's great. I love this one. It says seven, develop a growth mindset. If you can path uh, with no obstacles, this probably doesn't lead anywhere. If you can find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead anywhere. That's by Frank A. Clark. Excuse me. <coughs> Isn't it amazing the list of some of our co-workers go into order to avoid extra responsibilities. I got to reread that. That's not correct. Isn't it amazing the lengths, the lengths some of our co-workers go to in order to avoid extra responsibility? In the time they spend complaining, they could, you know, actually finish the work. I could go back to my army days on that one also. Okay, but I think you get the point, right? So, when researcher Carol Durr gave children problems to solve most buckled and bellyache by some uh, elevated, well, I can't even pronounce that word, salivated at the difficult challenge, why? She found that the eager ones had something called growth mindset and understanding that failure is necessary to step on the road to mastery. We just talked about that. Okay, not smart. These kids' curiosity overpowered their fear of embarrassment. That's funny. Some people uh, have a fear of failing because they're worried about being embarrassed. Okay? Wow. Cultivating a growth mindset is a miracle way to overcome any fear. When an obstacle is the way to become our higher selves, we start to eat obstacles for breakfast and ask for seconds. All right? So face your fears mindset, work on it, read books. Now this one is heavy here. It says, be grateful, number eight. And short quote by Viktor Frankl. I understood how a man who has nothing left in his world still may know bliss, be it only for a brief moment. And then it says, author and, and concentration camp survivor, Frank, Viktor Frankl, recalled a morning that he and fellow prisoners were forced to march in icy wind through puddles to a day of ditch digging. In the midst of despair, he thought of his wife, heard her voice and saw her smile. He had nothing left in the world yet was overcome by love and, and appreciation 
for her image. And this took away his fear. Wow. Okay, they say sometimes you can put people in jail, okay, but mentally you can't keep them in that jail. It kind of works the same way. I understand the theory behind that one. Now it says be public. What happens when people open their hearts, they get better. This is by Hakaru Maraka. Ooh, I'm sorry about those names, folks. For 10,000 of years, humans needed the tribe to survive. To be cast out might get you eaten by a narrow or starved to death. No wonder then that one of our largest fears is to be shunned, okay? It's why so many of us sadly adopt a fixed mindset that places looking good above growth. Yeah, okay, I could, uh, I could think of some stories about that one. You know, in fact, my wife and I, we were talking about this just the other night that when I was a young teenager, um, we, well, back then we had, a, we had this dress code. You just, you just didn't, as a teenager, go out in the street unless you were dressed to kill, okay? Even if you were just going to the grocery store for mom to get a small loaf of bread, all right? And some mayo or something like that, okay? We would actually put on, we had our jeans, believe it or not, back then, you would put a, you would iron your jeans and put a crease in them like they were a pair of pants. That was the style, okay? So you got dressed like, I don't know, like you were going to school or something, okay? just to go to the grocery store, that in case that certain someone saw you, you were looking good, right? So the fear was of looking bad while you were out in the street. That's kind of crazy how that goes, wow. It says, uh, it, <laughs> number 10, and this one I thought was heavy, do your research. We fear that we don't understand. Hardcore bigots have the least exposure to the people they judge. Politics is polarized because neither side talks to the other. We fail to apply for a new job, put out our hands, speak in public, try weird food, or visit exotic places because unknowns might lead to danger. Okay? This is true. I'm telling you, this is very true in life. He says here, yes, you can approach life as never-ending labors of Hercules before courageously. But he says, he says, but me, I'd rather not get sick every time I have to get on stage. Uh, so now you know at least 10 ways to overcome your fear. Okay. Now, to me, another reason that you want to overcome your fear, okay, is the fact that, as we talked about earlier, the only way that you're going to be able to build that business that you want to be, to have the wealth and the nice things that you want to have for your family is that you got to fight your fears. And normally you will find out that that word fear that we talked about, again, is just false evidence appealing, appearing real to you at that moment until you learn otherwise, okay? So I truly pray that somebody got something out of our 10 ways. I'm going the wrong way, right? <laughs> out of our 10 ways to cultivate fearlessness and that you'll take and share this with somebody else, please, if you got something out of it. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the next session of Wake Up With Jay. All right, just keep in mind, like I always say, when I'm ending is remember that God loves you, and so do I. Bye.